Okay, let's talk about classes. Now, I've always understood that most people in the world have no clue about RC car racing, scale motorsports. What, what are you joking? They just don't know. But the thing that always gets me is most of the people who actually know about RC cars and have RC cars, even they don't know about racing. And if they do, they don't really know enough to even be interested or they are intimidated by it. So that's always bewildered me. Like, how can this be? How can there be so many more people with cars bashing, driving in the park, but they don't go to actual tracks and they don't actually pick up racing? If you're even slightly competitive, that's what you should do. It's so much fun. Trust me. Okay, let's look at the different classes now. There are two main ways to separate uh, racing, on-road and off-road and electric or nitro. So let's start with on-road versus off-road. Which one is better? Well, it's just a preference, isn't it? But if we generalize a bit, we can pick up on some trends. I found that on-road races tend to be a bit more meticulous about their material. They're a bit OCD. You know, if you have OCD, probably you'd like to run on road. You know, you want to make sure that everything's clean and neat and tidy and you don't like the dust and all that stuff. So on road, it is for you maybe in that case. On road is also more about the equipment. So more about setup, the wrenching, fixing your car, adjusting it, making sure it's just perfect. And while club racing is less serious and fun typically at the bigger races the on-road guys are a bit more uptight a bit more serious that's just my experience off-road on the other hand it's a bit more relaxed it's a bit more laid back it's uh less ocd more about the socializing having fun bashing racing ah it doesn't matter more careless in that sense now this is just a sort of general overview of course there's overlap but this is just a sort of trend you can pick up on. Okay, now the second big division between the classes is electric versus nitro. Oh, here we go. I have to admit, electric is actually easier than nitro, especially if you're a complete beginner. Electric will just be easier for you to pick up. But that doesn't mean that nitro is impossible. It's not, it really isn't. Even if you're a complete beginner, you can learn the basics of nitro racing pretty quickly and have fun racing nitro. So don't think that just because you're a beginner, you have to run electric. No, if you prefer nitro, just start with that. You can do it. It's like learning to play the guitar. If you really like electric guitar, then get an electric guitar and start learning with that. You don't have to get an acoustic. People tend to think that. People tend to think you, oh, you have to get an acoustic to learn. No. Get an electric if that's what you like. People tend to think that you should start racing with electric RC cars because nitro is too difficult. It really isn't that way anymore in this day and age. If you're a beginner and you know you want to eventually run nitro, you can just start with that. Having said that, the truth is that most people start with electric. And well, unless they have someone like a father, for example, with more experience and then yeah, maybe the child starts with nitro and the father is, thanks to his experience, doing all the work. If we look deeper at the differences, then electric is definitely more maintenance free. It's cleaner. It's a bit more simple. But by definition, you drive the car, then you wait. You wait for batteries to charge. You wait for the motor, the speed controller to cool down. There's all this, always this sort of relatively short runtime and then a break. So there's time for socializing. There's time for fixing and maintaining your car. So in a way, it forces you to pace yourself. Nitro, on the other hand, is different. You can definitely get more runtime in a shorter space of time. So if you just have an hour to go to the track, you can basically drive for an hour all in one go. But the thing is, Nitro, it takes more maintenance to be honest, especially the eight scale off-road class. So there's more cleaning involved, more just general maintenance involved, but it's not something that's overwhelming. I'm just trying to give a clear picture of what we're dealing with. So my personal opinion is go for what you feel 
you will enjoy the most. Don't worry about anything else because you can learn regardless of if it's electric, nitro, on-road, off-road, whatever it is, go for that class. For me personally, the reason that I like nitro so much more is that it's just something about the sound and having a real engine in there. It's like electric motocross or Formula One versus Formula E. It's, it's no contest. So next, I'll get on the computer and we'll take a look at all the different racing classes in the world. The most popular ones and then the... Okay, let's go. Okay, so we're back. Focus. Three last points before we move on. Regardless of what class you choose, just remember that we all start racing because it's fun. So keep it fun no matter what. We all set our own goals. Some people just want to have a stress-free environment and escape from the real world. Other people want to become world champions, but we're all in this together and we all progress at different speeds. So remember, go to the track, enjoy yourself. That's number one. The process is supposed to be fun, no matter what your goal is. So pick a class and smile. 
I already touched on this point, but money is not a prohibiting factor when it comes to scale motorsports. The money is also scale. Don't listen to the people who say that it's too expensive or you can't do it. If you live in abject poverty, if you're homeless, okay, I understand. But if you're watching this, chances are you're not. If you live in a developed country and you have parents and you have a home, then you can race RC cars. You can get a summer job and save the money you need to buy all your equipment. I know because I did it. You have to be smart with your money. Make your own decisions, taking into account your own budget. Buy some secondhand stuff. Buy the equipment that you need, not all the stuff you want, not stuff that doesn't really help you, but looks cool. You know, be smart with your money. There's always a way. Where there's a will, there is a way. And money is not a prohibiting factor when it comes to RC racing. Trust me, full-scale motorsport costs thousands of dollars just to start, just to get a dirt bike or a go-kart. It's thousands and thousands of dollars. And not only that, you also need a parent to help you. You need transportation, you need some kind of support, you can't do it alone. Not with RC car racing, you can actually do it alone. So this truly is an amazing hobby. It's the best and safest form of motorsport, well, after motocross, but you get the point. The importance of attention to detail in RC is paramount. I can't stress this enough. Most of the things are actually pretty simple. They just take some extra attention and care. Simple things like just maintaining your equipment well, which we'll actually cover in this course. That's all it takes. Make the most of your equipment. Don't worry about other people, what they have, what they can afford. Worry about what you have and make the most of the equipment that you have. And as I already said, remember to have fun because this really is an amazing hobby. Travel the world, meet new people, explore. You never know where you'll end up and what opportunities will come your way, who you'll meet. And even if you only race locally with your friends, it's up to you. The decision is yours. This course works for you no matter what you decide to do, because even if you only race locally for fun with your friends, a car that works well and driving to the best of your ability, it's just more fun especially when you beat your friends, right? Let's get started. <laughs>